as the nation grapples with the effect of fuel subsidy removal and the NLC's response through the threat of an industrial action, the body has said it is under pressure on all sides. Also on the show this morning, we'll be looking at challenges of climate change and environmental sustainability on World Environmental Day. Of course, there'll be headlines in our segment of Off the Press, also on the program. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji and as usual, it's a pleasure to have you join us this morning. It's a, the start of another working week and uh, it's the 5th of June. Today, eventually, we celebrate the World uh, Environmental Day, or World Environment Day, June the 5th. 2023 is the day to celebrate World Environment Day. How much are you doing to keep our environment clean and safe for us and the children that we are yet to see uh, join us in this world? Today we'll be looking at being mindful of the world around us and our place in it. It's very fitting to have this as the theme as today we celebrate World Environment Day. So like we said, what are you doing to make sure our environment is safe? and clean. Once again, my name is Nyamgul Agaji, and I'm so glad to have you join us this morning. I'm sure that wherever you are, uh, you can have a free ride to wherever you, you're going to. Free ride, not that uh, you're not going to pay any money, or you're not going to spend any money if you own a car yourself, but a free ride in the sense that relatively the traffic was free, uh, at least at the time I was coming to work. I don't know at this time, because in Lagos, uh, so look, as far uh, as soon as it gets to 6 o'clock and beyond, the traffic begins to build up. But so far, uh, it was uh, a very, very free ride uh, getting from my destination to uh, work this morning. I hope that is going to be the same story with you uh, this morning. It's very, very difficult for a lot of people getting to work, getting to wherever their uh, source of livelihood is, and everything has skyrocketed. I do hope that something will be done very, very soon by the government and all the relevant bodies to make sure that um, uh, the, the, the suffering is alleviated. We hear that the NLC is uh, spoiling for a fight and they have been joined by the electricity uh, workers as well. And we remember how uh, when electricity workers went on strike um, a few months ago, what it was in Nigeria, what it was to our economy, to the people and everybody in this country. So we do hope that something will be done to make sure that this strike either never happens or if it happens, uh, it will be very short and a solution will be found to the problem that we are facing. Everything is about fuel subsidy removal and we're going to be having uh, a, a talk on that. But also, we know that a lot of things are on right now and trending. We have the fact that uh, the federal government has banned under 11 children from common entrance exams. So if a child is under 11, uh, they are not allowed to take common entrance examination. I don't know the premise under which uh, the federal government took this, this decision. Uh, I don't know why it was so necessary and urgent for them to take this decision. Maybe it's for the good of the children, so that children will be allowed to be children and not be hastened by their parents to uh, go to school, to finish up whatever they need to do, and uh, you know, graduate maybe before 15, and so on. But um, I'm also asking the question, what of some children who are really, really gifted uh, that I've heard stories of children under 15 who have had two degrees already, and those are very exceptional cases. So if that kind of a person, that kind of a case presents itself, what um, will the federal government do about it? What will the education system do about it? Or will they just say, okay, stand still and wait for the rest who are slow at learning so that they can grow and meet with you? Or there are some provisions that are made for that. I'm just, I'm just thinking aloud. Uh, but I, I do understand that um, when children are not allowed to be children, they become children when they should be adults. 
uh, if you know what I mean. Every child is supposed to develop at their pace. Every child is supposed to develop uh, the way uh, God intended it to be. You become a child, you become a, a young adult, you become an adult, you become an aged person, an ancestor, uh, if I may, and all that. So let people graduate in that order. Uh, maybe that is why the federal government is saying that. It's not like um, when it was our time that you have to put your hand over your head and see if it can get to the ear uh, before you can start primary school. But nowadays, uh, children who are still being suckled are sent off to school. They start with uh, uh, creche, they go to kindergarten, they go to nursery, they go to primary, they go to secondary school, and then they go to the university. Some of us didn't have that opportunity to go all, to all those places. We, our first teachers were our parents, and then the first uh, practical learning we had was going to farm or following our parents to their shops and whatever they needed to do to keep us um, you know, alive and taken care of. So, well, but the federal government has banned this. So if you are part of the people who want your children below 11 to do common entrance examination, go into secondary school, and maybe go into the university in a very short while, maybe you should listen to this very well. Get to know why the federal government said this and see how it affects you. Okay, um, those are some of the, that, that is one of the trending issues that we have uh, as well. We also have the fact that um, uh, Bernard Boy, who has been, has been making us proud, one of the people who has been making us proud, because in the entertainment industry, we can count so many people who are making us proud. You don't have to win a Grammy before you can say, we can say that you're making us proud. There's so many people who have not won Grammys, and they're still doing a very great job uh, on the international scene and selling the name of Nigeria in good light. Not like the people who go there, uh, peddle some drugs and all the things that bring bad name to Nigeria. But there are people who are doing well in the entertainment industry. You talk about movies, you talk about music, you talk about so many other things. As, as far as it's entertainment, our boys and our girls are doing very well. Even in sports, they're doing very well. So Bonner Boy has, uh, has had a, a, an 80,000 a capacity London Stadium sell out because his show is coming up there. So 80,000 is quite a number. How many FIFA matches are watched by 80,000 in one stadium? Just think about it. But Bonner Boy sells out 80,000 capacity London Stadium is good news for us. That means everybody that goes there will know that Bonner Boy comes from Nigeria. He will know that uh, uh, we're doing greatly in Nigeria, and he will respect us at least in that regard. But most importantly, as Bonner Boy um, has, has had this kind of uh, massive following, it shows that the Afrobeat is gaining ground uh, on the global scene. That means we should take pride in what we have. If Afrobeat is gaining so much ground, Afro hip hop, as you might call it, any name you want to call it, but it has to have Afro inside. It shows that the Africanness in the in the music of our people is making the world listen to us more than once. So, Bernard Boy, congratulations for that feat that you have achieved. And I know that a lot of other people, a lot of other musicians from Nigeria, could you know also attain that uh, when they choose to also visit places like that. Eighty thousand. It's not a small number. We also have, we also have a testament of global appetite for. Af okay, that that is on for Bernard Boy. But we also have what um, the PDP is asking the uh, president and his team to do. The PDP has said to Tinubu, President uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, to declare his assets. He and the vice president should declare their assets. That's what the PDP is doing. And some of us are just asking, is it not just a normal thing? Uh, isn't anybody who's going to lead us in whatever capacity from the local government on to the president supposed to just declare assets even before contesting elections? We understand that one governor has just declared assets and his assets run into trillions, in fact, nine trillion naira. And everybody has been asking, 
Where did he get 9 trillion naira to declare as assets? How did he make this money? How old is he? Uh, from when to when? What did he inherit or how has he been doing his business to have 9 trillion naira uh, as assets being declared? Well, the PDP is saying Yaradua, the president, the late President Yaradua, had declared his assets, and every person of integrity should do the same whenever they go to sit uh, on their, that exalted table or on that chair and superintend over Nigeria. Declare your assets. If you are a governor, declare your assets so that we know uh, what to, to say and where to find. Uh, uh, a reason to interrogate whatever will be happening in your life when you hand over. We've seen a lot of governors hand over and uh, they were like, like a thousand times richer than when they went into the uh, government house. It, it's, not, it's not a bad idea if you're creative enough in your private life even when you are a governor and all that, but we need to know how rich you are and how rich you will be when you leave office. All these things matter. All these things matter when we're talking about transparency and accountability. So um, apart from the fact that the PDP is asking for this to be done, maybe this is something that um, our electoral process should take uh, really seriously. You don't declare assets. You don't contest at all. Isn't that what the law should be? Anyway, that's what the PDP is saying. But so many other things will be brought to you when we bring you off the press this morning and so we're just asking you to stay tuned we are going to go for a short break and see what the weather is talking about <laughs>